Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We will be in Matthew chapter 3 verse 9, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18, as well as Hebrews chapter 9 verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for these words, Lord Jesus. Bless them, help us to have understanding and wisdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, and do not, Matthew chapter three, verse nine, and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. All right, so um, this is about the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to John the Baptist's baptism, and he was asking them who warned them of the coming wrath, right? He called them a brood of vipers. And so um, he was telling them that they needed to um, keep with um, repentance, right? Cause the fruit of repentance to be bared in their life, right? They needed their heart to shift and turn in the wrong opposite direction because they were um, trying to find justification through the association with Abraham and the law and their status, um, as well as their lineage, right? Um, just being Israelite. And so um, it says, and do not presume to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. So the Bible talks about the fact that, you know, God helps the, um, the children of Abraham, right? He helps them. And so that was their justification was that, hey, you know, we are those seed, we are those children. So he's always going to help us. He, he, that association with Abraham, right, was what they were trying to use as their justification. Their lineage um, is what they were trying to use as their justification to say, hey, we have access to God. We're going to be forgiven these people are, you know, less than or, or, um, you know, they are justified because they are, um, um, operating in the temple and things like that. So it says, for, I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. So meaning that he doesn't need a physical, um, lineage that is by blood um to to create children of abraham he can make children of abraham by faith it is not by blood right so um remember abraham was justified because of his faith because of his believing god it said abraham believed god and it was accounted to him as righteousness so it is by faith that these stones would become the children of abraham meaning that god does not need physical lineage but they wanted justification through association through abraham through the law all right and so the second scripture that the lord gave me was hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. All right. And so Christ went through all the motions on earth um, of, of going through the temptations, the tests, the trials, so that we could have an adequate support in him, right? He is the one who justifies us. He is the one who covers us, but it's not so that we don't have to suffer, right? Cause we're still going to suffer, right? If we suffer a little while, uh, um, for a while, we'll reign with him, right? So it says we, we need to, we need to go through these things, but Christ already went through them so that he could be our help. Not so that we could never suffer, but so that we could have someone to go to who is an adequate help, right? And he is the one who causes us to be justified. He is the one who gives us access um, to the throne when we need help. 
and when we are suffering so that we can have these needs addressed in our suffering, right? So say you're going through and you have cancer, you're, you're, you're going through all this pain. It does not mean that you're not supposed to have pain because Christ died. No, yes, by his stripes, we are healed, but we can go through these, these seasons of suffering because Christ went through a season of suffering and he is an adequate help. When we come to that throne, he gives us access, right? We have that key. He is our access point. So we can go in through um, and, and go before the throne and get the things that we need with boldness, with confidence, right? Um, and, and we could come back out, right? We can go through that season of suffering, having um, the, the things that we need to get through. All right. And it does not necessarily mean that suffering won't be there. Right. After you've suffered a little while, you will reign with him. And so um, it says that's in I want to say that's first Peter. All right. And so um, the third scripture um, that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter nine, verse three. Behind the second curtain was the second section called the most holy place. So that holy place is that place of access that we can have through Christ's suffering, right? His suffering um, allows us access. His his blood allows us atonement. Um, remember, there was blood sprinkled just before that veil um, so that, that the high priest could have access once a year, right? But the children of Israel will never allow that access. The, re- the, the normal everyday people who were not the high priest were not allowed that access. Right. So when Christ suffered and he died, he once and for all suffered for all of our sins. He atoned for our sins. So his blood was that permanent access for us to be able to walk through. Right. We are the stones that are by faith, the seed of Abraham because of that. So now we have access. We can go in, unlike the children of Israel who were using Abraham as justification. um, We use Abraham as an example of faith, right? As a father or a founder um, uh, of, of a part of those apostles and prophets who believed that's a part of the foundation. But we have Christ as our cornerstone. He is the one who actually allows us access. So whereas the everyday um, child of Israel um, would have had access through a a mediator, through a priest um, who could only go in once a year, um, we actually have access 24-7 for all of um, our lives because of the suffering of Christ and because of his blood atonement, which allows us permanent access. So it says behind the second curtain was a second section called the most holy place. We can go in when we're suffering. We can go in. Um, we can we can have access to that point. When we um, receive Christ as our Savior and Lord, we are, are in keeping with the fruit of repentance. We are, are being submerged in his death his burial and his resurrection, right? When we become baptized, that is the symbolic um, of of what has happened spiritually um, in our rebirth in him, our death, our burial, our resurrection in him. And so because of that, we have access to that most holy place where we can um, boldly come before the throne and, and get what we need during our times of suffering. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and go back through all three and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. So as you are going through your life, don't use, um, oh, my grandmother was a part of the church, my mother, my father, my this, my that, your association with the church, right? That is not justification. That is not enough to gain access. You need Christ, right? You need someone who has suffered through the trials of this earth you need to um gain access through him to that throne and then you can have um everything that you need as you go through right it is not because of um abraham it is not because of um your association with abraham being um uh 
because of your lineage. It is not because of the law and you followed so well um, a strict lifestyle of holiness to the law. Those are not things that will allow you access to God, right? Those are those are things that they were using as justification, but that is not fruitful towards repentance. That is not turning away from your sin. That is continuing in the ways of this world and what the world would think would justify them, right? What actually justifies you is Christ alone. So let's go ahead and look at the second one. It was Hebrews chapter two, verse 18, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So as we um, are going through, we can go through with perfect knowledge that God has gone through, right? He is an adequate help. He has sent an adequate help in his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father for our lives. We can have access to God because Jesus suffered. And as he suffered, um, he knows what you need when you're going through. And because of his blood that he suffered on the cross, his blood coming down, that was atonement, which allows us permanent access into that most holy place, which is a part of the third um, scripture. It says behind the second curtain, was a second section called the most holy place. You can get to that most holy place, no matter whether you're suffering from a disease, a sickness, whether you um, feel like you are just mentally unable to connect with God for some reason. Um, Maybe you are having psychological issues, whatever it is, Christ suffered right? So that when you suffer, you have adequate help and you have access to the throne where you can get the things that you need, right? Go to him, go very specifically about what it is that you need. Ask Holy Spirit, what is it do I, that I need today from the throne? What do I need today from the throne, right? What is it that I need to gain access to? Well, you are not using the law, Abraham, or your lineage as justification. You are using Christ and Christ alone as your justification. His blood allows you access. His suffering gives him compassion and understanding for what you are going through. Tell him, tell him if you need help with a, a, um, a parent, a spouse, an ex, um, having to deal with your children, um, interacting with people of the world, anything, go to the throne. Ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is it that I need from the throne today? I know I have access through your suffering. I have access and I can go and ask of my father what it is that I need. I can go to that most holy place and just get in your prayer closet and pray and go there and ask for what you need. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, that we have access to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that we can come 24-7, Lord God. There is no interference in the spirit that will stop us from gaining access, Lord God. We will press into you. We will seek your face. We will stand before your throne, and we know we will get what we need from you, our Father. We love you. We praise you, Lord God. Let our lives be pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. In your name, I pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. Um, One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read his word and chew on it, ask him questions, talk to him and learn how to wait on his response. 
He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek his face today. Amen. Um, also, um, as you um, are going about seeking God's face, ask him for a church home, ask him to show you the place that you should go so that you can be around other believers and stay sharp in the word of God. Um, also go out and be baptized in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit in the name of Jesus. And then also, um, tell other people about Christ and what he's done for your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.